Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, the European stance towards Russia has historically been somewhat inconsistent. On the one hand, Russia has been perceived as a potential threat to Europe regardless of which political system is in place be it Tsarist authoritarianism, Soviet communism, or the current democratic rule of Vladimir Putin. Now, it's worth noting that even Western polling agencies do not dispute the legitimacy of Putin's elections or the fact that his popularity out far outstrips other politicians anywhere else in the world. In fact, Putin's popular around the world, and we expect, to, except in the Russian phobic West, where the daily Orwellian three minutes of hate is served up in their media. Now, the EU's attitudes has long had a desire to expand its European territories. The ongoing dispute over the Ukraine represents the latest iteration of Drang ach Osten, or Urge to the East phenomenon. Now, Europe's effectively annexed a portion of Russian influence and citing a European choice. Now, that's obligated to uphold and safeguard from potential Russian imperialist incursions. However, following the decision to pursue a policy of closer integration with the Ukraine, Europe's found itself in a position where it's losing influence in other areas, including those that it traditionally considered it to be within its sphere of influence. I mean, Russia is encroaching on our traditional spheres of influence, which is causing us concerns, stated the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Morell. I'm sure he's referring to Africa. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com and further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all just for watching. So have a good day. In regard to Africa and the Mediterranean, Borel stated, he said, we should be concerned about what's happening in Africa. He said, when I first arrived in Brussels, there were French and Italian interests in Libya. They didn't always see eye to eye, but they were certainly present. Now, today, there's not a single European presence left in Libya. Only Turkish and Russians are now there. On the coast of Libya, there's a number of military bases which are not European, but Turkish and Russian. This is not the outcome we envisaged in the Mediterranean. Uh, when Mr. Borrell assumed his current role, which is based in Brussels, was about five years ago. And it would appear during that period that Russia and Turkey have compelled their European rivals to withdraw from Libya. <clears throat> Furthermore, in recent years, Russia has also become involved in West Africa, following the ascendance of anti-French military leaders in Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso through various coups. These leaders have requested military assistance from Russia, and that includes military advisors and private military contractors. Now, this raises the question of whether Africa is becoming a new front line between Russia and the West. It was certainly suggested by that in, um, in Le Monde, the French newspaper. Or maybe it's just a local reaction with a repudiation by these countries of the French colonial attitudes that have persisted for years. I mean, the situation there is actually complex and it's not actually a new development. I mean, Europe's opposition in Africa is primarily driven not by Russians, but by the local actors. And it's difficult to ascertain what Borrell means to live under European leadership. I mean, Mr. Borrell's correct in his assertion that the European Union should be concerned about developments in Africa, particularly North Africa. And the adjacent Sahara region has been a Roman, uh, European priority since Roman times with the southern Mediterranean coast even considered part of the European civilization. I mean, the Europe, Roman Empire stretched all across the North African coast, and even now in places like Tunisia, Algeria and Libya, there are still historical remnants and ruins of their time, and that's even after 2,000 years. Now, in the 19th century, Europe established control over North Africa, and then subsequently over the entire continent. The French, the British and the Italians colonised from Morocco in the west to Egypt in the, uh, in the east. Now, the process of decolonisation that followed the Second World War 
did not entail Europe's complete withdrawal from the continent. In fact, Europe continued to exert control over various aspects of West African society, particularly the financial systems. I mean, the former French colonies in West Africa were forced to use the Pan-African franc and their economies were subject to control by the French Central Bank. And even now this situation persists and that's part of the problems that France has with its former colonies. Now, post the Second World War in the 50s and 60s, Europe began to face a formidable competitor in Africa and that was the Soviet Union. Over the course of three decades, the Soviet Union managed to exert significantly expand its influence in the region and it reached uh, considerable levels with leaders of many countries post-colonial uh, being educated in Russia. Now following the collapse of the USSR, Russia began to re-engage with Africa in the 2000s with a notable expansion of its presence in the region, including military operations in several countries that previously had been aligned with France. Now Europe's role in this was pivotal, as it was the Europeans who spearheaded the intervention in Libya, which had far-reaching regional implications, and not just in the region, but also for Europe. I mean, in the last five years, Russia's held a number of African summits, and don't forget that the BRICS currently has three African members in Ethiopia, Egypt and South Africa, and at least three other African countries have intended expressed their intention to join the BRICS in their Nigeria, Algeria and Tunisia. Now, in Borrell's remarks uh, about the French and Italian forces in Libya in 2019, he doesn't provide insight on how these kind of troops arrived in the country after their 2011 military intervention. I mean, the current increase of Russian or <coughs> Turkish military bases can be attributed to the decision by Sarkozy and Obama to overthrow Gaddafi. I mean, they were egged on by Hillary Clinton, who said in an interview, we came, we saw, and he died, referring to the brutal execution of the Libyan leader. Now, it's worth noting at the time of the West military intervention and the overthrow of Gaddafi, Libya was the richest country in Africa with the highest standard of living. Now, thanks to the West's megalomania, Libya is a failed state. And it's also worth noting <coughs> that the Central Bank, African Republic, Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso would not be so closely aligned to uh, the Russia if the West had not helped to strengthen the Islamist and separatist movements across the region by destroying the unified Libyan state. I mean, this destruction of Libya left a vacuum and a void which the US looked to exploit using its Islamic proxies across North Africa and the Middle East, particularly in Syria, where they shipped arms from Libya to ISIS. I mean, the US's hatred of Gaddafi was based on his pan-African policies. I mean, the colonel made significant contributions to the integration processes of African states, and a move that was not well received by Europe or the United States. I mean, he proposed the introduction of a pan-African currency backed by Libya's gold reserves, and he angered the US by deciding, just like Saddam Hussein before him, to stop selling his oil for dollars. Similarly, they're not happy with China's expanding presence in Africa and Russia's resurgence in the region, which had commenced around that time. However, the West's decision to overthrow Gaddafi and disintegrate Libya has had a detrimental impact on its own position in quite a number of ways. Now these obviously include the millions of migrants and the disappointment of the elites of the <coughs> West African states. As with the invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq, the West has created significant long-term challenges for itself with Libya without gaining any geological or geopolitical benefits. <coughs> the Libyan conflicts also undermined the West position in large parts of the Sahara and the Sahel. Now, Russia's entry into the region was made easier and the conditions for this were created as a result of European military interventions. Now this is something that Borrell should actually uh, be grateful for as it was Europe that decided to make a dream of a united Mediterranean a reality. So he's managed to get that. So he's managed to unite them all against uh, the European Union and against France, which is just another example of the EU policies towards Russia and their idiocy. As they try to spread hatred against Russia, but the global South see it's the US and the EU that are 
forcing them to be subservient and try to exploit them for their own selfish interests. Now, countries of that Africa see that working with Russia and China brings tangible benefits while the EU only offers empty platitudes. Now, thank you for watching. Uh, uh, please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website uh, by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Now, do use the comment section. I do love interacting and getting back to all of you and hearing your opinions. Thank you.